All right, guys, let's start getting this apart. Let's uh, unhook this first. We got a little clip right here. Just squeeze these together and pop that out of there. Then take a pliers. It's got the big holes at the, over here at the bottom. I'm going to squeeze that clamp in. Bring it back. Oh, that thing locked into place. I hate those little things sometimes. Right, then you want to slowly, lightly grab your grab the holes with the pliers. Just twist that back and forth and take that off. And then we're going to put this into the pot. Now right now i got a pan up under there just in case some antifreeze come out of here. But it ain't going to come out of there. So we're going to put this in the party line. And you might be wondering what the heck is he talking about. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is just wipe off the top of the ignition wires and we're going to mark them one, two, three, and four. And while that's drying, here goes our VVT solenoids right here. Let's disconnect those. And to disconnect those, you want to come on this side. It's going to have that little tab right there. Squeeze that tab into the connector and then pull back. And you got the one over here, which is difficult to see, but do that one as well. What the heck? Okay, next is it's clipped onto the valve cover right here. That's all you do is wiggle that back and forth. And if you have a problem like I just had. Get a pair of needle nose. Pop that up. Switch back. And pop that one up. Okay, now we walk around. We're going to start on our injectors. The injectors are plugged up. That tab right there. We'll squeeze into the connector, and then I'm using, I'm using I'm using this so my hands not in the way. But you're gonna use your thumb and pull that to in and unplug it. All right. So let's go around here and get to let's disconnect the four fuel injectors. And here's a little trick, guys. Like I got my needle nose. You can take your needle nose and you can squeeze it just like that and pick it up just like that. Now, once we get our fuel injector disconnected, our harness is still held on by these clips right here. So take your same needle, these needle nose are gonna come in great. Take your needle nose, you're gonna use the, the fuel rail as a prime point. And just stick the into there just like that. And pull it up. Over here, same thing. All right, let's get the other injectors disconnected and get this last one disconnected. And while I'm here, camshaft positioning sensor. The plug, the tab is right there. Squeeze that tab down to the connector and unplug it. All right, let's get the rest of those done and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got everything disconnected. Let's take our whole harness and just lean that over to the side. Now, this is a good time also. Now, you have your camshaft positioning sensor on the other side. And what you want to do, same thing, the connector, the tab is on the top, squeeze that down, and unplug it. Great. Next thing we're going to do, guys, now our, our uh, markers, the marker, marker points we put there, it's kind of dry. So now we're just going to twist our ignition wires and pull them up. Okay, let's, let's pull those up and then leave it connect, leave it inside this harness right here, leave it inside the connector. And we're going to swing all this to the side. All right? We'll be right back. All right, guys. You know what? Let's get our coil out of the way. First thing, we're going to unplug it. The plug for the coil is over here. Now, you can't see it, but there's a tab underneath that coil. Mm -hmm. So, you got to put your... right Now, the tab is going to be right here in the middle at the edge. Underneath, though. Okay. So, put your finger up under there. And you'll, you'll feel it. Pick that tab up and back that coil up. Why couldn't they put it on the top? 
I don't know. I have no idea. Alright, let's turn this over while you can while we got this out. There it is right there. Mm. That tab right there, you're gonna squeeze in and it's gonna unplug. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, your coil is held on by four T25 Torx bolts. You can see one right there. Or you can, oh, you can see them. This yep. whole thing is really okay. One right here. Okay. Then there's one right here. Okay. And then the other one's difficult to get to. It's at the other corner. It's at the other corner. So I got a T25 torque socket, quarter inch drive, with a four inch quarter inch drive extension. And I'm going to go back here and put this one on first. And I can see right now these wires are in the way. So. See, and it's actually right there, so I gotta go between these two wires. Dang it! I'm on it right there, and you see the two wires. See, I'm in between those two wires right there. Then take my quarter inch drive ratchet and take that out. All right, let's get all three of them, and we'll be right back. All four, I'm sorry, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got all four screws out. We left them right in there. Just take our whole coil assembly and pick it right up. You can leave your screws right into it, and we're going to take this. And we're gonna put this to the party line. Now, while we go put that to the party line, here's your cam sensors. Now, what we're gonna do, more than likely, they're probably the same, but in case they ain't, <laughs> what we're gonna do is mark them. This one is on the left side of the engine, and this one is the right side of the engine. And these cam sensors are held on held on by one eight millimeter bolt. So I got my eight millimeter socket, quarter inch uh three inch drive with a four inch uh three inch drive extension. Whoops and, and don't tighten them don't tighten them like I did. out just move the sensor back and forth a little bit and pick it right up and a good idea take the bolt and put it right back in there all right let's get that one out and take all three parts and put them to the party line we'll be right back all right guys the next thing we're going to do is take off the valve cover but before you take off the valve cover you got to remove the vvt's because there's front valve cover bolts why i don't know why they do i have no idea why they did that right up under the VVT. So let's mark these. We have left one and we have the right one. And these VVTs are just like the cam sensors held on by one eight millimeter bolt. Right on the top. One right there and on this one is going to be on the top on the other side. So we got an eight millimeter deep quarter inch drive with a quarter inch drive ratchet. I'm afraid to see what we see on this solenoid. <laughs> Take the bolt out. Squeeze it back and forth. And pull it out. Well, not as bad as I thought it would be. That's because there's no oil. Yeah, that's exactly why. <laughs> Alright. So what we're going to do, put the bolt back in it. And then, let's take out the other one. And put both of them into the party line. All right? We'll be right back. All right, guys. Your valve cover is held on by 12 8 millimeter either nuts or it's like studs. Like these right here. The whole stud is going to come out. But before you do that, you got to grab you a 10 millimeter deep quarter inch drive with your quarter inch drive ratchet. And back here, you got your O2 sensor harness. And you got your harness going to the cam sensor right here. And it's held on by a bracket, which is held on by a 10 millimeter nut. So what we're going to do is get that nut off of there. And we're 
going to put this nut to the side. Then we're going to switch over to an 8 millimeter deep. I, I, my, remember my 8 millimeter uh, 3 h drive is down there somewhere. I still couldn't find it. So I'm using an 8 millimeter deep quarter inch drive and I'm using my reducer of 3 8 to quarter inch. Put that on. And then I'm going to use my cordless ratchet. And there's 12 bolts. You're going to have one, two, three, four on this side. And right on the opposite side of it, you're going to see the other four. And then in the center, you're going to have two right here in the center of the valve cover and two on each opposite ends. All right, so let's go around and get all those out. All right, be right back. Okay, guys, we got them all loose. Let's see if I'll... Of course, I knew it was going to be stuck. So, what are we going to do here? Now, I'm going to do this the simple way. Since I like my needle nose, I'm going to take my needle nose, use the same fuel rail, and I'm going to just go around here and try to, try to tie this up. This thing is stuck. You sure you got all the bolts? Yeah, I'm sure. Don't tell me I'm not sure. I'm just asking. Because that doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Alright, so I'm going to have to get a screwdriver. Right, I've got my long screwdriver here. And what I'm going to do is go right here towards the edge. And I'm going to try to... Sure, dang it, man. What the heck? This thing is really stuck down there. Man. All right, guys. Are we ready to see what the heck we got up under here? bad as I thought. What's this? Good. That's a piece of plastic. I see another piece right there. Let's look at the bottom of this valve cover. Oh my goodness. This thing. Let's get this out on the date. Oh, it melted. Heck yeah. Oh man, look at this, guys. This car not only overheated oh my goodness this is worse than the Kia holy cow man so it's got like a bathroom or something in there and it melted yeah but if you look oh wow uh, new valve cover is now on the list Jeez. this is not turning out good this is definitely going down a rabbit hole the heck is this that was oh man guys what the heck did sylvia get us into you picked it because she fell in love with the car no you picked it all right let's What's put all that stuff right there in the middle i don't know that's crud Ooh. well i don't know maybe something dead hey you want to see it no <laughs> all right guys let's put this in the party line <laughs> and we'll be right back when are you gonna show them the party line Some when it don't know it yeah when it gets a little bit longer all right just saying all right, bear back. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is remove the intake manifold. The first thing we're going to do is the intake manifold, uh, the oil dipstick tube is bolted to the manifold. And there is a... The manifold bolted to the cylinder head. Oh, yeah, so what you're going to get to with a T25 torque socket with quarter inch drive, with quarter inch drive ratchet. And can you see that bolt right there? Oh, of course. Yeah, that's what's that. I wasn't paying attention. I know you wasn't paying attention, but I, I was like, I, she's over there. I don't know how she's going to see this. Oh. See the bolt right there? So we're going to reach in it. Now, this is going to be a tight fit, but your fan, as you can see, you have a little play to move that to the side. So I'm going there. 
and remove that screw. All right. And once you get it loose, guys, like this, you can try to take it off now and use it. No, that ain't working. So let's get that off, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got the screw out. And you can see our dipstick is loose, and we might be able to just pull this whole dipstick out. Yeah, well, leave it there. And let's put this to the side because we're going to need this to put it back in there. And let's move on <laughs> to our next step. No, actually, guys, what we're going to do is let's uh, we're going to try to take off the whole, keep all this together. First of all, let's unplug this right here. You got the tab right there. Let's push that into the connector and unplug it. All this hose assembly right here, we see it's going to the the air uh, the air box right here. We're gonna just pull this. This should we loosened this up before. Oh. Back that off just like that. Follow it all down. It's got a clip right here. There's two, like it's like an arrowhead. So what we're gonna do is squeeze the two tabs on the side, squeeze them in, and then pull down on that. And then this hose goes down to our brake booster back here. Let's see if we can pull it out from like that. Or nope, we're gonna have to squeeze, take that clamp. Son of a biscuit, man! How are you gonna do that if the whole thing turns? This don't this thing supposed to come out of come out of there like normal cars? There we go. All right, so we're gonna take all that off and bring it up together. Wait, man, what we got here? I can't. This is right here, so we got another cylinder right here. Let's disconnect this. The tab on this one is at the bottom, so we're gonna pick that tab up and unplug it. All right, so it's disconnected, it's connected. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, now in order to take off our intake, we got a series of eight millimeter or 10 millimeter bolts holding it on, but one of them is gonna be right here on the corner, right behind the alternator. So we gotta take the alternator off. <laughs> now, we got before we take the alternator off, we gotta take the belt off. So before we take the belt off, in order for you to get a good sight of what's going on we gotta we're gonna take this mount off but before we take the mount off we gotta jack the engine up <laughs> so if you look up under here you want to take you a jack a hydraulic jack and you want to put you a block of wood between the jack and the oil pan if you jack that oil pan up with just the jack you will crack that oil pan so you're gonna have that block of wood right between there jack it up and just put a little bit of tension on the bottom of that oil pan. So, go right here and just, just a little bit just like that. Now that we've got that done, let's go over here, and the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect, take off this little bracket right here. And we have two nuts and one bolt. Let's get the sizes of those. This one, 18 millimeter, so we got 18 millimeter deep, half inch drive, and that one looks like a 15, and a 15 millimeter deep, half inch drive. So, let's go ahead, get our half inch drive gun. One, two, it looks like they came up as all studs. Then, now this third one, you might, you want to get a extension on it or you can just move your AC line out just just enough to get that out of the way. Well better yet guys instead of doing that what I did get you a four inch half inch drive extension. Alright we got our bolts let's take this out 
and put that to the party line. We'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is remove our motor mount. A motor mount is held on by three 15 millimeter bolts. You got one right here, one on that side, and then one on this side. I'm going to be using a 15 millimeter deep half inch drive with a wobble extension. And that wobble extension lets your socket wobble like this. And a five inch half inch drive. So I'm going to start from this one right here, get my cordless impact. And let's get the other two out. Alright, we'll be right back. Alright guys, all three are out. Take them out. Drop your bolt. Yeah, throw the bolts away. Take your bolts guys and put them back in there just in case you lose them. And then we're going to put them out to the party line. Now guys, there is no tensioner, belt tensioner, on these belts. These are called stretch fit belts. They stretch. Why do it? I have no idea, guys. But we're going to show you how to take these off and they suck. I don't know why they do it. I don't have no idea. But, so, what we got to do is go to the front of the... Go down here to the tire, because we got to remove the tire. And your tire is held on by four 19 millimeter or three quarter inch lug nuts. Use 19 millimeter because they definitely fit a lot better. So I got a 19 millimeter deep, half inch drive, the D wall. And this. What the heck? A little 21. Maybe you said that 19 fit better. Yeah, there is a 19. I got a 19, but. But I'm saying, you said the 19 Wait a minute. fit better. Something ain't right here. Oh man, wait a minute. Oh, those are the ones with the caps on them. These suck. Ugh. And this car's gonna give me. This guy's gonna fight us from the moment. One. So it looks like we're gonna be getting new lug nuts for this. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna try. Let me get a 20 millimeter and see if that will fit. Be right back. Alright guys, I got a 20 millimeter socket and that fits up there pretty good. But I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you guys that this is an 18 millimeter. Let's go walk back here to, to the back tire. That's Harley. That's Harley. <laughs> Alright, so we got a 19 millimeter right here. See how perfect that fit on that lug? But this one's kind of swollen. Actually, the cap is coming off or something. So, we're going to end up getting... Well, I don't understand what's going on. They, it's these... Inside is the lug, but these are like caps on them. Uh -huh. And they always loosen up. I mean, this is a problem that's been going on for years with these lug nuts. Why they still use them, I have no idea. So, let's go back up here to the front. I'll follow you, Sibby. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to use the 20 millimeter and see... Hopefully, it comes off without the whole cap spinning... And get stuck in there. You can actually look, you can actually tell it's like swollen. I don't know if you can tell. But them guys know. They know what's up. So yeah, boy, Tim know what he's talking about. Alright. Oh boy. Let's get this to get with this last one. Alright, let's get them off and we'll be right back. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do is remove this cover right here. Now this cover is held on by two T30 Torx bolts. And so we're going to use a T30 Torx socket and a 6 inch 3 8 drive extension. And your bolts are going to be... There's one right there. This, this cover is bent. This cover should not be all the way up like this. It should be over here. But you got one bolt right there. And then go right across and another one right there. This thing is all messed up, man. What the heck is going on with this car? I hate when people don't know how to take care of their cars. Maybe they didn't like it. Maybe. Okay, one. Uh, 
Come on, you're making me look bad on camera. I'm talking to you, Sylvia. What did I do? You're supposed to say, oh, something wrong with the battery. Let me get right back. What battery? Oh, this battery. Yeah. No, there's something wrong with my battery. <laughs> Alright, guys, we got this thing down. What is this right here? They used a, did a paper trick or something? I don't know what the heck, man. All right, let's put this to the party line, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, stretch fit belt. What you're going to need, get you a Lyle tool, 59-370. This is the pack, and this is the tool. So, what you're going to do, one side says remove, and one side says install. So what you want to do is go down here to the belt, the side that says remove is going to be out like this. And you're going to see this thing got a little groove right there. That's going to hook on to the lip of the harmonic balancer. And that's all you're going to do is just put it right in there like that. Turn it uh, until it gets tight in there. Yeah, buddy. Now you're going to take you an 18 millimeter deep. Half inch drive with your half inch drive ratchet. Put it onto the harmonic balancer bolt and you're gonna totally turn the engine clockwise. Dang it. Should have held it in there, but the belt is starting to come off. Let me get that in there again. This is bull, man. Well, I mean, it is coming off, but it should make it a lot more easier than that. You, and guys, do not put it on the back of this because the crankshaft position sits in the back and there's fins. You don't want to damage that. That's the reason why I'm up here trying to be, trying to, in the front. Yeah, man, I'm going to put it right there. Why? Somebody tell me why they even come up with this design. To annoy you. I should have gotten something better, man. I should just... If Sylvia wasn't here, guys, I'd cut this belt in a heartbeat. You can if you want to, because we'll get a new one. Don't make it seem like I'm the one stopping you. You are. See, this thing gets... Oh, man. I I, I want to cut this thing so bad, but I ain't going to do it. 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 I'm trying to put this any kind of way now, but I'm trying not to put it in the back. I'm trying not to damage that thing in the back. Sucks, man. I should so never have got this. So, how about, like, if, um, you put it on right and then you turn it and when it gets to, like, towards the bottom, then can't you pull on the belt? That belt is so tight, I can't even, I budge it. It is. I don't care either way it goes. I personally don't care. As long as it gets 
spoil for there. Dang it. All right. So it's it's off, right? But now it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? All right. We got that off. I tell you what, since we got that bolt out of there like that, grab my cordless impact. Take that off. This, this is, there's no keyway or nothing on this thing holding it in. But now, I guess I got the belt so tight. Son of a biscuit. You know what? This thing is... Why don't you try a different pulley? What do you mean a different pulley? Do that, you know, try use that. a tool on a different pulley. Well, how about if I try to... If I can try to push it... Push, I'm trying to take it off of the AC compressor, but I'm trying to take it off towards the back. But this sucks. Okay. We just gained a little more play. <laughs> now, I'm up here at the water pump. Oh, sorry. Okay, good. See, now this, this sucks. That really sucks. That really, 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 really sucks. Don't try to, or maybe you can use your puller? Can I, no, I don't know. Moves around there. It's got some kind of lip around there. But it's not going to grab that. <sighs> Alright, we'll be right back. <laughs> 